Oh man, it is a big week and we will get you set for the Bulls and Miami Hurricanes with Alex Golish. We'll also speak with Jason Vaughn, Derek Sharp here with Kaylee Cottrell and Joey Johnston. Before we get to all of that, let's look a little bit back at the Bulls win on the road in Southern Miss. Didn't start well. The Golden Eagles were trying all sorts of stuff and it was working out. And then the Bulls scored the next four touchdowns and they ended up one of the things, Joey, I know was a big focus was touchdowns instead of field goals. And I guess 49 points, that, that, that's the math adds up there. It was amazing. Once, uh, once they fell down by two touchdowns, they proceeded to score seven touchdowns of their own in 10 drives. I, I've never seen the offense look more efficient. It was, it was a thing, to, a beauty to, to witness. And there were some spectacular plays. There were two great catches. I'm going to ask Coach Golish to judge which was the better of. Josh Hardeman, six foot four, amazing keeping one foot in bounds. And then Doug Luili, who... <laughs> You're there on yeah. the field. You get to see the reactions and maybe get some post-game reactions to those kind of plays. How amazing was that? No, they were so great. And one thing that stood out to me, I don't know if you noticed it, Joey, but getting on the plane, everyone was so happy. And when I first started walking down to, to go to my seat, there's W. Eli on the corner. He looks up, hi, just the biggest <laughs> smile on his face, just so happy. Oh, Once yeah. we take off, everybody knocks out. But before that, they were all on top of the world. Are so you are cool. you some, someone that knocked? You guys, do you go to sleep on the plane or no? I can't fall asleep yeah, on the plane. I, I have trouble life. with it. I have trouble with it. Why, I'm is usually, Jim Lauk telling you stories? So. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> I'm keyed up. I usually try to read or do something. And, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, At like 2 a.m.? Yeah, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, people. Um, I try, but... But I was, I was, uh, you know, happy to leave Hattiesburg, maybe for the last time. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to reschedule a game there. And, uh, uh, please. <laughs> crowd was, crowd was actually good. They had to contend with some stuff, and they win the game 49 mm. to 24. Speaking of contending with some stuff, uh, you wrote a just a tremendous article just summarizing it, all the key rewind moments on GoUSFBulls.com. And, and not to put you on the spot, but you said that's the 23rd state that they've won a game yeah, in, right? Yeah, just a wow. ridiculous trivia that rattles through my mind. <laughs> the, the things I think about at 2 a.m. <laughs> flying home. Well, to put you on the spot, what were the other 22 states real well, quick? No, I'm not going to do okay, that. Okay, Florida <laughs> and, the, and the rest. Okay, yeah. good. Good. Another thing uh, that jumped out is 9-0 uh, and against the Sun Belt, and all of those have been double digits. You pointed that out. Yep. But that's something mm. that I think, and forget about the other eight games, this team, this game that we're talking about, they did what they were supposed to do, and that in, in many ways is very impressive to me. Very impressive, very impressive, and, and had some adversity. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that crowd was whipped up into a bit of a frenzy, so USF took care of business after that and made it look very efficient. They, I think, as Coach Golish mentioned in his press conference, even down 14 nothing at no time did the Bulls think they were going to lose that game, which shows you how far they've come. We will get more into it with Coach Golish. You're going to see a great feature with Kaylee Cottrell and a couple of the transfers that are getting very big attention in the secondary for the Bulls. They had a great game with some big hits and forcing some turnovers. And, oh, yeah, we're looking forward to the Miami Hurricanes, the Sunshine State Showdown this Saturday at 7 o'clock at Raymond James Stadium. Uh, anytime there's a win, though, we got to go to the cinematic recap, so <laughs> cue it up now. It welcomes you to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, inside M.M. Roberts Stadium for the 15th all-time between South Florida and Southern Mid. See the speed, house tall, 42 yards to the house. Rodemaker tall in the pocket. This is Davis Dalton. Ball has been popped loose and scooped up with the football in his hands. This back corner. What a play. Hello, top 10 as Josh Hardeman hauls it in. He 
can be cute. Hiram Brown was built for this. In from two yards out. It was broken up by Brent Austin. Okay. It's a fake to John Cannon. He is trying to run and get in, and he will dive for the pylon, but step out at the three-yard line. Back onto the field go the Bulls offense. Oh, pressure in his face. This is thrown up and intercepted. Doug Lee. Naquan right into space. It's a sprint to the end zone and five wins it. He had lost a foot race tonight. He won't lose this one as well. 50 yards for Kelly Joyner Jr. on a house call. Yes, they storm back into this football game tonight. What an effort from those guys. We put that. Yeah, a lot of highlights, and we hope for more this week. We're going to get more this week with the Bulls going up against Miami. First, a little bit on the trip to Hattiesburg, Coach. Uh, we had some great catches I wanted to talk to you about. I think a fake field goal call might come up, but having no issues really after a tough start, that's what stood out to me. Like you just turned it on and it was uh, full speed ahead. Yeah, uh, we've got to try to figure out, and I feel like we're getting closer to figuring out why, but I, I think the, the thing I'm most proud of is, you know, you, as the head coach, you, you kind of are constantly surveying what the heck is going on. And, and we're down 14, nothing. You go up and down that sideline and there was, zero doubt from anybody literally coaches coaching players listening players leading guys engaged and it was like all right like this is the drive this is it this is it this is when we go score this is when we go get a stop i i saw no panic uh, i think that was whether i'm proud or really just more than anything you you kind of point to all right like that's our growth is that there's there's no no flinch there's no anything. We're just going to go play the next play. And I was proud of the way we bounced back. Um, but I think understanding that, hey, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, you can't go down 14 nothing. That was the second time that's happened to us uh, really quickly like that a year ago uh, at Navy. And we bounced back there and we bounced back again. Uh, we've got we've to make sure that we start fast. And up until that point, that hadn't really been an issue for us. So as coaches, you, you go back, you examine what the heck happened. And and you try to prevent that in every imaginable way. You go down 14 nothing, then you proceed to score seven touchdowns on your next 10 drives and drives of 14, 13, 11, and eight plays among them. Uh, what about the efficiency of your offense? It certainly looked like you were kicking on all gears there. Yeah, I think, I think the ability to, to move, the, move the chains, the, the third and longs after those first two drives became third and mediums, they became third and shorts, and and that went back to first and second down efficiency. I think over the first three weeks, you go back and you study study us, our first second down efficiency up until really the fourth drive of that game has not been very good. Mm -hmm. uh, us being able to jumpstart drives has, has not, and that's as much coaching as anything else, is finding ways to start to get in rhythm. Um, once we did, we were, we were able to play really good ball. I think the drive most proud of is the 93, play, 93 yard drive. You don't see us, you're not in that situation a ton, but you just don't see us string 12, 13, 14 play drives. But I think the maturity and the patience of our offense kind of showed there where, man, take what they give you. Just take what they give you and just keep playing the next play and keep playing the next play. And um, and I was proud of how we bounced back there, but, but we can't start like that. Mm -hmm. I said three highlight plays uh, end with the, the call on the fake field goal. Other than the fact, I think you gave our radio play-by-play -play man, Jim Lauk, a heads up because he called it. He said, if you've got a fake in the bag, this is the time to use it. And then secondly... You could tell I trust Jim. <laughs> he knew it was coming. So uh, what was the better catch? Uh, the incredible stretch by your six-foot-four stud new wide receiver or the nimble-handed giant that was Doug Lurieli? really turn things around there in a key sequence. Yeah, so so Josh Hardiman's catch was really, really cool, but that's his job. 
Doug Bouilly, his job is to to plug up A and B gaps and, and pass rush the quarterback. Uh, that was, we were just talking earlier, that was one of the coolest plays I've seen in a really, really long time. Uh, Mac forcing the bad throw and then and then Doug, man, like you don't see that where where you scoop a ball basically off the ground. And uh, that was really, really special. And I was super happy for Doug. Um, he spends time on these jugs. Um, and Coach KP makes a huge emphasis of balls, balls in the air, batted balls. Like those are our balls. And you saw a handful last year. That was another really good example of it. But mm. I, I got to give it to Doug if you're asking me between those two. So Saturday night. Number eight, Miami comes into Raymond James Stadium, a large crowd expected, a great occasion. Uh, Tampa's going to be hopping for college football. What's your emotions as you have an occasion like this uh, presented before you? I know you want to prepare and win the game, but just all the bells and whistles around it, what do you think about what's happened here? Yeah, you know, we're, we're excited that, that it's an important game. Um, the, the really expectation when we got here was that they all become this type of atmosphere, that they all become that important. Uh, part of it is us getting to a point where we're rele relevant enough to make it important. Uh, part of it is the ability to schedule really big games here at home. Um, but I think it's a, it's for us, it's the next step for us in our growth. It's the next step for us as a program is, is to pack Ray J out and, and go compete at a really, really high level to go win those games. We're, we're trying to actually do everything we can to keep all of that out and yeah. focus on what's important. And I think that's growth in our program, growth for our players and the maturity of our players being able to handle all the distractions being gone. I think that that's part of being at home. That's part of families coming in and media attention and social media attention and all these things. Our ability to lock in, focus on what's important, which is that football game, um, is going to be really, really critical to our success. You mentioned uh, the attention. Uh, Miami is getting a lot of it deservedly so with their quarterback, but also, I mean, you talk about elite stuff, their third down conversion at 64, it's 14 against, that kind of thing. Uh, what you've got to try and do is put them down when you can, when they catch a pass. And I noticed that against Southern Miss. You've got a secondary that's not just tackling guys. You know, it's never good when you have a leading tackle that's your safety because it's usually 20 yards down the field. These were preventing first downs. How impressed have you been, not just by the coverage, but their physicality and how important is that going to be this week? Yeah, I think it'll be absolutely huge. You know, we we take a lot of pride in in our secondary. Um, I think that that whole unit has done a really, really good job of not just, like you said, covering, but I think being able to fit in the run, being able to break on um, balls underneath, creating turnovers at a really, really high rate. Uh, and and then when there is a ball that that goes goes deep, being able to get it down and play the next play. Um, you know, I think probably not necessarily the question, but the thing I'm most proud of, and I showed our team, the entire team, the ability to play the next play on defense. Um, you know, there's two stops in the red zone where they got down there with a chunk play or several chunk plays, and then we just kept playing the next play and the next play and the next play caused a turnover, um, really caused two turnovers down there where where you just continue to play the next play, but a huge credit to our secondary. I think I think those guys are flying around. Those guys are being really physical. Um, and that's what you want the identity of your defense to be. This game will feature two of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the country, USF's Byron Brown and Miami's Cam Ward. You had mentioned earlier in, the, in your press conference, uh, it's really important to protect Byron. That's one of the keys to the game. And I imagine Miami feels the same way about protecting Cam Ward. Is that Really, kind of you boil it down. Those are those are two huge areas. Both people, uh, both teams need their quarterbacks to be who, be who they are, and they got to keep people off them. Yeah, I, I think so. I, you know, us offensively, everything goes through Byram. Um, such a big part of certainly our run game, our pass game, getting us to the right right checks, getting us to the right plays, getting us to the right protections. Um, his ability to to get us right, his ability to protect the football and manage manage getting it to the right guys over and over and over and over again is absolutely huge. The more defensively they, they affect that, uh, the more you can control the outcome of the game. I don't think it's a secret. I'm not giving you a trade secret right. out. <laughs> yeah, for us, Eureka. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. For us defensively, um, the ability to affect Cam. Um, and he's, you know, I said it in the press conference, he's played so much football that, that 
no, there's very little you can do to just like, wow, I've never seen that before. You know, um, I, he, he, again, I don't know him, but you watch the film and he's so calm, collected. Uh, you could tell highly intelligent football player. And when, when he's got time and when it's all moving at the pace that, that they want it to, he's incredibly efficient. Um, and so affecting him would be the key to, to getting them out of rhythm and getting them off the field. You talk about trying to remove some of the outside noise when it comes to the magnitude of this matchup. Are you going to be able to temper your defensive line coach, however? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, KP, KP's been in these games, um, <laughs> uh, really on both sides, but he's been in these games. The guy's done it for a really long time. He, he's not one I worry about. <laughs> Interesting thing about KP, he has more affiliation to USF than he does Miami at this point. Um, he's a bull. Uh, he, he may not he may not know it, but he, he is a bull. No, he he knows it. He you know KP takes so much pride in. Um, he he's got a lot of pride in in being a hurricane. DVD as well. Um, you know th those guys poured a lot of sweat and, and and blood into into that program and are super proud as they should be. You should be proud of your alma mater. Um, but both those guys, KP especially, uh, you know, are so invested in this place and are so invested in their players and are so invested in in what we're building here, um, they would tell you they're certainly bulls. All right, so last word on the game. Uh, you know, you've got enough to do preparing for an opponent like that. Talk about the attention that's been placed upon it, the demands, the media attention. Compare it, because you guys have had some pretty busy weeks, some pretty big opponents. Is this kind of next level because of the crowd and the importance? How this this game like this could actually staple you guys into a big situation and, and the recruiting you, the yeah, recruiting aspect for sure um i think i think that the expectation is that that's what it should be mm -hmm. um and from a recruiting side it's absolutely huge to have we'll have 200 some recruits here and, wow. and their families and for them to see the environment i think is going to be really really big i think winning the game would be even even bigger than that um but i think for us to continue to grow as a program, these have to be common occurrences. Mm -hmm. um, the media attention that comes with it, that's what college football is. I think that's what makes college football so great is that people care. If they didn't care, there would be no coverage. And so I'm excited that, that we get to be in prime time again um, on a Saturday night. I think to have, to have two games in four weeks that are, that are such a, a nationally relevant and important games and you look down the line and there's going to be another Friday night matchup that's going to be mm -hmm. in the same breath. There's going to be another one on a Friday night that's going to be in a, hu a huge matchup in terms of having national eyes on you. Um, that's what we're building. That's what, what you hope every week is. And, and we've got a ways to go there, but, but it's certainly a start. We can't wait. Thanks a lot, Coach, as always. Thank you. One of his standouts on the defensive side and overall as a team leader, Jason Vaughn, coming up soon on the show. What is the other's favorite hobby? Rock is stumped over here. <laughs> what is the other's favorite video game? You can't say on that, girl. I already know, cuz. Which one he yelled the most with? That's yeah? the only two games I played. I don't play none of them. <laughs> I already know. I know you two have been teammates kind of more often than not your whole life. What did that journey look like? Um, it's been a long journey, I can say that. Um, we really knew each other since elementary school. I say that, just playing each other in AAU basketball, and then we got to know each other in middle school. We started in middle school, and then we went to high school. We played we played every sport together, football, basketball, and track. Just being beside each other, we like, it like we complement each other. We swap positions now, so he give me tips, I give him tips. How cool is it now to be reunited and playing collegiate football together? It's awesome, it just feels like high school. Honestly, that's all I can say. Just running out there, when he make a play, all I can do is smile. Ever since we got on the field in the spring, he made a play, I'm running over there celebrating with him. If I make a play, he's running over celebrating with me. So, I mean, it's just fun to have a brother like that on the field. To be back together is like, dream come true. I'm just excited to play with him again. I feel like that chemistry is going to take us to another level. What has that camaraderie and that support meant to you your whole life? He's pushed me, so a lot of times when he's doing drills, I'm just watching him. He's going to make sure I'm good. I'm going to make sure he's good. And his maturity is bringing me along. He's my standard, so I just hold myself to him and see if he make that break, I'm going to try to do the same thing. 
because he just holds me to a different standard. So it's just helped me become a better player. Now I know you two have described yourselves as brothers, so we're gonna see how much you really do know each other. I'll start easy. What is the other's favorite color? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your favorite color? Black. No, you know, okay, turn yours around. Is that true? No. No, oh, you can't be. I wear a lot of black though. I do wear a lot of black. Where is the other's favorite place to eat? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. Yeah? <laughs> I can't eat up. Who is the other's favorite artist to play pre-game? Oh, Monica. I'm not listening to these. I, I do listen to these. Yeah? Yeah? Check it. Oh, yeah, Daphne, you know? Does the other prefer day games or night games? I like day games. Yeah? I like the night. Who is the other's favorite athlete, pro athlete? We're on the same page over here. Bro, <laughs> oh, bro. I think you guys are pretty good. Back here on Bullseye, Derek, Kaylee, and now Jason Vaughn, AKA part of the B Backer Group. And I don't want to get anybody in trouble. You don't have to tell us what the B stands for unless you want to. No, I think what well, we say in the, in the room, we say it stands for business. Oh. It stands for business. That, so, I like that. That's, we, stand, we like to stand on business, you know? That's, well, that's, right. what, that's what I'm going with then. Yes, and it's right. a perfect introduction to how you guys have been playing this year. Not just the B Backers, right. but the whole defense. How's yes, it been from your point of view? Man, it's been fun. It's been fun. Guys have been locked in. Guys have been really energetic about, you know, what we got to do on the field and just playing under T.O. has been amazing. Yeah, and uh, you, you saw the, the hitting mm. uh, right from the beginning against Bethune and, Bethune and against Alabama. And, and now you got the, the secondary. These guys can lay it down, too. Speak about how much you – I know you can't actually practice too much of hitting, but yeah. putting it into practice in the game has been great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's what T.O. stands on. Like, if one of his, you know – he goes into the game plan and he's like, we hitting these guys. Like, that's literally part of the game plan. So, you know, it's, it's a huge emphasis and we try to, you know, implement it as much as we can throughout practice, whether, you know, whether it's stud or just working on the technique of tackling itself. So you can tell. What's Tio like as a coach? <sighs> it's a loaded question. <laughs> it's a loaded question. I feel like, you know, first of all, amazing coach, super smart mind. Um, you know, he's... He'll get you going. Like, I don't even, you know, T.O. just, he got aura. Like, he just, he, he'll get you going. And, like, you know, what he says goes. And, you know, it's in the best interest of the defense and the best interest of the team. So, you try and do it to the best of your ability. So, got to ask you, obviously, uh, I try to do the math in my head. Is this year six? It is. It is it year is six. six. Thank you for sticking around. No, listen, I want to get into awesome. that part of it. Because, you know, we talk about Kelly Joyner and similar yeah. situation. And I love the fact that there's this group of guys that yeah. you know came to the Bay and are staying in the Bay. How rewarding was that decision for you? And do you guys have like a little click going on? You yeah, I mean, me and Kelly, have, we've been we came in the same year, the same spring 2019, and ever since then we've been we've been pretty close. You know, um, we're roommates now. So Kelly's my roommate. So. I did not know that. Yeah, wow, so, that is a click. All right. Yeah, so he's scoring. I'm like, that's my roommate. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say we're we're clicked up, but like. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I'm really close to Kelly and, you know, I really respect the dude and we have like this mutual respect for each other. And we both know that like, you know, Kelly's one of the only guys in the locker room that's been through the, the same thing as me over the course of the same time time span. So, you know, we, we relate a lot and we, we have the same, we have similar traumas and PTSD and stuff like that. So, you know, for, for Kelly to be there and for him to be here and stay, stay down with me and, you know, stay loyal to the Bay, give us, you know, I feel like me and Kelly, like we're guys that, you know, if you're gonna take a chance on us, we're gonna, you know, do the, you know, the most we can for the program, most we can, you know, be the most loyal. You know what I'm saying? Because like, excellent. you know, before NIL and all that, it was like a sense of pride in where you went, and that's the era of like Kelly and I come from. And, you know, just to be loyal to who you who you say you're loyal to. You know, it really is. Yeah. Being one of the older guys on the team, do you embody that leadership role? Yeah, for sure. For sure, I do. Um, we got a, we got some young guys in the, you know the B backer room specifically, and we try to our best to um, you know get those guys going and let the, uh, have them understand the defense and the ins and outs of just being a college football player as much as possible. And um, you know the way Creamer has it set up is uh, the old you know there's three older guys, three younger guys, so right. we each kind of like delegate one guy to each guy, to, you know one older guy to one younger guy, and you know we stay with them and 
Like, for example, like Ashton Mosey is my roommate and when we go travel and stuff. And sure. so, you know, I got to make sure almost like he's on time for everything. And, then, you know, I mean, it helps because once he does, you know, once he sees me doing everything that I'm supposed to do, he knows that you just fall right in line. And That's it's easy. it makes it makes it easier for the, the younger guys to transition into being, you know, taking steps to be a leader. It is one of the more exclusive positions on the roster because it's, well, I'll let you explain it. Coach Creamer actually did a good job when he spoke to the media. Okay. It's a, it's a big blend of skills, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's almost like you're a, a glorified uh, nickelback, if you will, a bigger, a bigger nickelback. Um, That's a good way to say it. Yeah, yeah, because you got to drop, you got to rush, you got to set the edge, you got to, you know, spill, you got to do a whole bunch of stuff. But I mean, it, it's super fun, you know, it's super fun. That, that's <laughs> what say, makes it more fun. I was going to say, it sounds like it'd be a disaster for me, but for you. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's not, I, yeah, it's super yeah. fun. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It makes you, makes you, you know, think you got to stay on your toes and really be involved with the defense. So. You are a guy that loves to have fun, not just on the field, but I know, Kaylee, you've seen him out in the community quite a bit. Yeah, I love it. Even in Boca, we went to the hospital together with yeah. Ben, and during Victory Day, I mean, you seem to just light up yeah. in those situations. Yeah. What does that do for you? Um, you know, it's always fun to give back. I feel like it's always fun to, uh, it's always good to take a step back and realize, you know, how much, how blessed you are to be in the position you are. and. Nothing better than you know serving the community or just going out and seeing people's face like light up when you when you're around. It's like no but no more rewarding feeling than that. So you know it, it keeps you humble and it keeps you like grateful for you know the position you're in. Mm -hmm. All right. Of Speaking of, yeah. I know you're more yeah. on the social media than me. <laughs> yeah. You got some questions. When it comes yeah, to I, I have some hard hitting questions for hard you now. Hitting, yeah, hitting. the hard hitting ones. Yikes. Hey, it's, hey um, listen, right. B backer's got to be a hard hitter. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So, okay, he's going to do the true. same. So, we'll on your it. Instagram, yeah. you have artists yeah. as your business. What does yeah. that mean? Why? Um, so, like, <laughs> that's a good question. Man. I've never had nobody ask me that question. <laughs> Probably, um, so I put artists because. Uh, anything can be an art like art is yeah. so subjective and i feel like hmm. um football in itself is an art you know technique absolutely and, and technique you know in football is an art for me it, it was more more pertaining to like you know getting after the quarterback rushing the passer yeah art. art in itself yeah, yeah so for sure i just like to consider myself an artist a, a, you know somebody who can create you know wasn't things. there a video of ag with sean atkins about the art of catching yeah. passes or something like yeah. that yeah running yeah or, definitely he's a picasso when it comes to that yeah that's yeah. nice to make sense so, yeah. it yeah, does i like that a lot that's okay I'm okay i'm glad you i'm glad you see that, you <laughs> <Yeah>. that <laughs> well also i've noticed the ninja is it a ninja it is next ninja, to your name yeah. okay why um so I like uh, these nice are the hard hitting cutlery. questions yeah, yeah, yeah. we all yeah. want to know. It's, you know, it's, a, it's accumulation of reasons. I feel like you know the first one is like you just got to have that mask on mentality when you're going into the game and mm. you trying I to like you know that. take you know trying to take take the win basically like. And um, another reason is just because my like I grew up my brothers grew up doing martial arts and stuff like that. Okay. Mm. And um, yeah, I always try and um, kind of like emulate that and what I do. I mean, if you really think about it, pass rushing and using your hands, playing a D line is almost on the, the verge of it's hand hand, yeah, 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 hand, -hand yeah, combat, stuff like that. So it has this rela you know, relationship. So I, I just I feels like it um kind of blends together for me and it's fun. Yeah, so, that's a cool way to think about it. Yeah. And lastly it all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. Your profile picture. Yeah. Is it anime? It is. Yeah. Are you really into that? Yeah. I am, I am. She got me. <laughs> you gotta help me out on this one. No, it's cool. <laughs> Explain am, that a little just, bit. Um, I don't know. I feel like, do you know what anime is? Yeah, it's like the Japanese. Yeah, yeah, anime. yeah. So it, I don't know. It's like, you know, there's a lot of life lessons in anime. There's a lot, it's a lot of super inspiring characters and, and, you know, plots and stories that guys have. And I just, wow. I don't know. I just feel like I relate to, to some things, you know, that, yeah. that pertain to anime. I got some some tattoos and stuff. But well, you can show it to the camera. Yeah, I mean, it look a little messed up now because I've been sweating, but um, <laughs> this is from Hunter. Um, it's just a scene. If you, it's one of those things like if you know, you know. Yeah. But, no, it's cool. You know, it's look always, it up. Yeah, it's had a big, um, big impact on me and you know the way I, the way I like to have a mindset of certain things when it comes yeah. to football, especially. Yeah. Just That's being a competitor. Neat. He's they a cool so guy much. to follow. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right, so we got to wrap it up with the thought about Miami, mm -hmm. and also your line coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who played for the Hurricanes. Right. And I'm sure you talk about T.O. being jacked up. What's yeah. it been like? I know it's early in the week in practice. Yeah. And how is that mentality looking for you guys? Oh, man, mentality is razor sharp. Um, guys are locked in. You know, it, it's the most important game because it's the next game. And, you know, we, we just try and have the, 
the best process possible, you know, to go into Saturday feeling the best, feeling the most confident and feeling like you're ready to attack, ready to get the win. And ready to see a big crowd. What does that mean to you yes, guys? Yes, sir. I mean, I, I'm from Miami, so I'm going to have a few few people there. <laughs> and, you know, it's going to be fun to, to, you know, put my name out there, put the team's name out there and show them our culture, show, show the world our culture so that, you know, there's no there's no gray area between, you know, who, who the team is to beat in Florida. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I like it. Is there a gray area in your family? Are there Canes fans? Or? Um, mm. Dolphins is allowable, but I don't know about mm. Canes. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say the Canes fans. I've been at USF so long, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all, everybody's okay. a USF fan now. But um, <laughs> growing up, I was actually like, I was a Canes fan. I was um, I grew up watching the Thirty for Thirties and stuff like that. You know, looking at the history and, and stuff like that. But uh, other than that, no. I mean, we USF all the way now. Yes, we all oh, are. Yes, Thank sir. you. It's going to be a special Thank day. You, Appreciate it, Jason. Yep. All Probably. the inside as well. Gotcha. We'll wrap it up on Bullseye next. Great stuff. What a guy. Way. You threw him off, but he was ready, right? <laughs> He's always ready. He's a cool guy on the field, cool guy off the field. Awesome to talk to. And part of that defense, you get to meet uh, the, the former high school teammates as well. I know yeah. people got to see that relationship, but, but they're just an impressive all-around group. Yeah, I mean, and Ruck and Banks, my feature this week, and Joey did an awesome story on them, and you know, them as roommates now, did a little roommate test with them, had a ball, and they're cool guys. You know, it's an important week when, uh, if you might have caught him at the end of the Alex Golish interview, the guy behind us is trying to get on his lawnmower and get as close <laughs> to our location as possible. I, I doubt it's because he's needing to cut the artificial turf that they didn't practice on today. Derek, I think it's a clear sign the Bulls are ready to mow down the Hurricanes. Yes! That's right. Was that, are, that's right. Was that good? Who are a cut above competition I like wise. it. Oh, yes. wow. Uh, <laughs> and, and let's get into it, by the way. Uh, listen, you, you've, you've done a great job for however many years you've been here writing for GoUSFBulls.com of capturing the importance of a game. But you've got to take it to a new level this week, don't you? Doesn't well, it feel is, that way? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, in 2007, USF beat number five, West Virginia. And 17 years later, people are still talking about that game. Yes. Mm. I think this game has the potential to be like that if the Bulls are successful. It is more than another game. You don't want it, you know, Coach Golish doesn't want to make any game bigger than it is. But you cannot ignore what could happen if the Bulls can win this game. So... The occasion is spectacular. The opportunity is there. The fans are excited. That's why we do this. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I know you're, you're, you're vibing on it too, Kaylee. Yeah, I think we all I are. Wait. I mean, as we're taping this, we're still quite a few days away from the game. Yeah. But I feel like kickoff's just a couple of minutes away. Yeah. Except no, they got to cut and... the grass behind it. <laughs> Field's not ready yet. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. I, can, can can you come to my house, by the way? Okay. <laughs> so how are you feeling? Uh, no, you I'm so stoked for it. Just, I mean, the energy of a packed out Ray J and for our guys to feed off of that. Can't wait. Well, Miami is really good. We talked a lot about Cam Ward. We mentioned, I just threw out a couple numbers to AG, which he's more than uh, ready to uh, and willing about. Mm -hmm. But uh, how about yardage? Among the best in the country, 610 yards per game, allowing Less than 190 yards per game. It is a big challenge for the Bulls, but I have a feeling, based on what we've heard and what we feel, that they are ready to take it on. We'll sum it up for you next week on Bullseye. For my friends and co-hosts, Joey Johnson and Kaylee Gattell and Derek Sharp, keep those horns up. Go Bulls!